All right, we're gonna see if the ultrasonic leak detector finds this leak on this car first. So the story is we are out here in Pacifica, as you can see from all the rust on the door, and out here is salt water and you can see the corrosion on the fasteners. So we're in a high salt water area where I'm literally one block off the ocean here. And when I attached, I have zero PSI. Story is, is the AC hasn't worked in a while and uh, they want it working now, but I see absolutely uh, no refrigerant in there. So I'm just gonna go right into nitrogen pressure testing because I know this thing at zero, if there is a leak, this thing has been respirating to the atmosphere through the leak. Every time the engine heats up and cools down, it draws outside moist ambient air in, it heats up, it pushes it out through that hole and it keeps on doing that thing. So let's give a little pressure here. It would help if I opened up one. Let's close the vacuum because we don't want to blow 170 PSI into my vacuum pump because there will be an oily mess everywhere. Let's try this again. There we go. And you're watching the pressure go up with me. Now the high, the, the cutoff expansion valve, I pushed in 170 PSI right here. But as you see on the other side, on the low side, it's off. There's not 170 PSI over there. That's because of the hard shutoff expansion valve is not allowing it to get over there. So let's open up the low side. And my, my little leak detector is going crazy because it's uh, picking up the flush of air going through my gauges. It actually can hear the harmonics of the velocity of the air. When I opened up this valve, my leak detector picked that up. That's how sensitive that is. Okay, we're at 170 PSI. Now, the proper way to do, unless it's a big leak, let's look for a real big leak. We'll just do this and shut it down right away, see what happens. So right now, this, is, this would just find a really big leak and it's not dropping really fast. Now, the proper way to find a small leak is you leave it open and leave it pressurized for about 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. What this does is it allows whatever temperature of the gas that you have, which is dry nitrogen, into the system to either lower its temperature or raise its temperature to whatever the temperature of all the metal components in the surface, because that will affect a few tenths of a PSI, making you think you either have a leak or there's a little gremlin adding in gas in a mysterious place while you watch the pressure go up. So you wanna compensate for that by allowing it just to rest 10 or 15 minutes. So you close it off here and you'd go away, have a sandwich, do some paperwork, do your visual, do something else. Then you would come back and touch the tightness test. Okay, but since I'm doing a video and I'm not gonna make you wait and I don't edit or splice in videos, I'm just gonna go right into the tightness test and I hit tightness test, boom, right there. So we have, there's our pressure. Here's our timer. Our timer has not activated because I did not turn it on yet. Uh, it says up here, press enter to start test. So I'll press enter and you'll see the timer turn on. Right now it's timing, one second, two second, three, four, like that. And over here, it'll display from your start and as tenths of a PSI go down, in some cases go up, it will display, you see 0, 0. 0.0. There's 0. 0.01 loss. Now remember, this is happening. I did not let this rest 10 or 15 minutes first before I started this test. And we're in a cold area right off the ocean. And my vehicle, my tank is warm because it was inside my vehicle. And this has been sitting by the ocean. So it's in a cold place so that it would actually be going down. So we don't have a massive leak, but I am going to go around anyway, real quickly with this because I, uh, there goes two tents. So I'll be going around. Let me see if I could do something really fast. So since we're in a corrosive area, with a lot of, uh, I'm just seeing if I could find one for you while I'm on video really fast. If not, I'm just gonna switch. I have to do this off camera because I have to get my hands up in there. And uh, I'm looking for just the slightest sign. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna, 
as little as that leak is up there unless i'm right on top of it and this might be a leak that only leaks when there's hot refrigerant on the high side line cold refrigerant on a cold side line vibration three tenths so we'll let this sit a while and uh, i'm gonna prep i'm gonna um, get ready to run this system with refrigerant in it to look for a leak but i just did this really quickly to try to find a real fast obvious leak and uh, i'm gonna keep searching around but i can't hold the camera and do this at the same time and uh if i find it with this there'll be a second video of this otherwise the next video will be me with this under the vacuum filling it up with refrigerant and going around with the refrigerant leak detector